What will you take now? <laughs> see juice, see water, and see wine. <laughs> Mama Teresa, all this for me? <laughs> yes, they are for you. <laughs> see the bottle of wine. See the juice, the water. Don't worry, I will take water. <laughs> I'm here for a very important discussion. Hmm. Ah, yes. My dear sister, without wasting time, I'm here to discuss with you. I want us to discuss as women together. Okay? Two days ago, somebody called me and booked for 200 pieces of meat pie. The ingredients I was not having, and it was urgent. They needed it urgent. So, I have to quickly tell my husband, and I rushed to that African market. You know that African market that is very close to the train station? Yes, yes, yes. That African market. Ah. So I decided to go there. So when I was going, my husband was telling me, oh, are you sure you you, you, you meet up with that? African market because they closed it. I left home around 9 30. I told my husband, Don't worry, yes, I will go. I will meet them, I will try. The way I drove on the roads, luckily for me, getting there, I met them. They were almost closing, but I met them. So after buying what I came for, I, you know, as my usual practice, the tracks with I me, you know, they miss that one. <laughs> Evangelism. <laughs> I saw some men that were hanging beside the Africa store. So I decided to walk to them and share the word of God. Just give them the trap. Lo and behold, I saw your husband among them. My father is my husband. Ah, you saw him. <laughs> I look at him very well. Hey, Papa Teresa. So I greeted them. So I just passed. I didn't ask him anything. But what surprised me most, he was still with his walking clothes, his walking shoes. I looked at it and said, ah, at this time of the night, and the following day he'll be going to work. So I went home. When I got home, I told my husband, I said, I saw Papa Teresa today. I saw him. Look at the condition. Look at the way I saw. My husband was shocked. I said, at that time of the night, you meet Papa Teresa was still outside. I said, yes, so he was still weird, having his clothes, his walking clothes, his walking shoes at that time of the night. So my husband was so shocked and said, no. The following day, my husband called your husband and he was asking your husband, he was talking to him. And your husband, he did not even argue, he did not lie. He said, yes, it's true. That these days, he find peace outside. He preferred to be at work than to be at home. He prefer to be outside, moving from one place to the other, till you guys will sleep uh, before he will come back home. So my husband asked him why. He said, you have made the home unbearable for him. He said, you have made the home like hell to him. He said, you have, you are a very nagging woman that everything he does, you complain. You complain that even when he eats a bowl of food, the way you will talk down him, the way you will talk to him, the food is as if you put your hand in him to take it off. He said he's not having rest of mind. He said he said too many things. He never see eh? too many things that these days when he go and hang around like that before he comes back, or oh, you guys are slept. Sometimes you will not be sleepy, but most time. The children have already slept. He said, this is how you have been doing it for some time now. My husband was asking him, why didn't you tell me to see if I can call in? He said, no, that's, he's just, he, don't, he, guys, he doesn't need a third party in his home. So that is why, my dear, he said so many things, some are itching the ears, some are itching the ears. And the way, the way your husband was sounding, head wise, it's not fine. Yes. He said now, even his BP is now becoming high. The doctor is asking him, 
What is the problem? What are you doing? What are you thinking? That he could not tell the doctor that tell him that he, what he's facing at home. My dear sister, that man, he never see. That is just the beginning. He said now, for some time you refuse to cook for him, you don't cook for him. Before he comes, you have already eaten you and the children. Then he will just be picking whatever he can pick outside to eat. Man, he said so many things. I cannot sit here now and tell you everything your husband said. He said so many things. I say, God. He said for he said most time he cannot even he doesn't see the children's uh, he doesn't see them the weekend but they live together. You guys are living together for him to see the children because before he will come the children have slept. They have slept. Sometimes it's only weekend he see his own children. He said he said so many things, my dear sister. What is the problem? What your husband said is it true? Is it true? Because when you, when, the way he talked to my husband, your husband was crying on the phone. Your husband was crying on the phone. My husband now said, oh, I should go and see you and see how to talk to you. If not, he, will, he himself will come into the matter. So I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want, I don't want, I don't know how you will feel my husband and I just call me without me coming to you first. That's why I decided to come to you first. Sister, what is the problem? Tell me. That is why I'm here. If I tell you, what did that man? What did that man do? Mm. Don't bother. The English word says a problem share is half solved. Don't worry, that is why I'm here. That man, he never see. That is just the beginning. Tell me. What? And he even said, your husband said that for more than two years now, the inner room, you don't open the inner room for him. You know what I mean now? The husband and wife fellowship. He said you don't allow him to, to come to the inner room. You even you you lock that place for for more than two years now. After you had the your, your last baby, you lock that place. No more fellowship for you and him. What is the point? If I tell you what's in that man, that man, hmm? I never see you. You tell me. That is why I'm here. I came for this. Because your husband is not fine. The way he, he, I saw him that day. The way I saw him. And it, my sister, I don't want to, I don't want to predict war. But the, your, your husband's health is deteriorating. The way I see him. For him to be, for him to tell my husband that his BP is high. The doctor, they are not giving him medications on how to control his BP. And he said all this is started after he got married to you. What is the problem? If I tell you, tell me, my dear sister. Tell me. Mm. You at least see me as your sister. As your sister. As your friend. Just be free. Talk to me. There are things when you have boys in your heart. You have boys in your heart. There are things you need to share. You need to share to release yourself. Yes, please. I'm not. If you don't feel, if you don't feel like sharing with me, don't share. Mm? If you are not convinced, if you don't, if you don't feel like sharing it with me, don't share. But look for somebody. That's what I can say. Look for somebody you can confide in and share with that person. Please, no, it's not that I don't have confidence in you, it's not that, it's not that I don't trust you, no, if I don't even have that, I will not even sit down and be telling you that man, no, I will not even say anything, so, no, no, no. I know you now, but that man, what is it, what has he done, 
What has he done? That is so big that even for you to voice it out is even heavy in your mouth. What has he done? Please tell me. Hmm? Tell me. Because for your husband to be going from one place, how can your husband close 4.30 and 10 o'clock is not yet home and the night 10 o'clock and he closes 4.30 in the evening. Then before he will be coming back home 10.30, this time everybody has slept. What kind of life is that? What kind of life is that? And you, you will just find sleep. You will sleep. You will say he's coming. Oh, please speak to me. Talk to me, please. Okay. Let me tell you.